this is the coupling uh, that I showed you a couple of days ago. Uh, primed and painted uh, in uh, sort of car aerosol. Takes paint very, very well. Um, and then just needs uh, a brush up with talcum powder to, to free it all up again. And again, functions fine. Now, um, when I offered this up to the model, uh, to a loco, the coupling itself, I think, is just a fraction big. And so, uh, in amongst other minor tweaking, I've basically uh, made it a bit smaller. And this is sort of Mark II. Um, you can see it's significantly smaller. And this one equates to uh, slightly smaller than the Linton Barnstaple ones. Uh, and those are quite big, so it's a, a mid-range size chopper coupling. Um, I confess, of course, that the draft box uh, is uh, of a wider type than you would normally find for a chopper coupling, but that's the necessity for the springing, and I'm personally quite prepared to, to live with that. So. This is um, the iteration that I'm actually using. Um, I've also, uh, sorry, that's, whoops, always hitting the camera. Uh, that's a painted version, and you can just see a steel link at the bottom of the chopper lever and that's uh, what the magnet attracts and gives you the automatic coupling and uncoupling. So that's, uh, that's a pair of those things. Now, other variations. We have a round head uh, chopper. Exactly the same principle. And that's the the mate to it, with the, the actual chopper swing, etc., etc. Uh, and another variant. I've not built this up yet, um, and indeed I've modified it ever so slightly since then. But this is. Uh, uh, an offset one. So this is for use on locos uh, with uh, uh, low buffer beams. Uh, Quarry Hunslets are the um, uh, obvious uh, beneficiaries of, of, of this and it means the draft box can be set lower than the coupling uh, Center line. Now, in case anyone thinks that's a bit crude and a bit imaginative and a bit off, um, I'm sure I saw something not too dissimilar actually on the Festiniog this summer. So I'm I am borrowing from reality uh, on that. Um, I have also uh, another type which I've done for. Uh, some uh, bogey coaches, in fact, uh, which give, uh, which change the centre height, if you like, and those are, oh, our old friends, the um, uh, coaches, or two of them are the coaches from Paul's old layout um, and you can see what job it's doing there. The coupling height needs to be taller than the coupling slot 
so there you go that's what that particular coupling is for and this is of course is a converted Bachmann tram um, Ooh. And uh, I've also done some couplings on a plain spigot uh, for putting on uh, plain stock, uh, which then don't have swivels to them. Now, um, and wouldn't you know it, the sun's moved over and, and this loco is now in shadow. Um, but here you, here you go. Um, There you go, that couples up quite nicely and pulls away equally well. Bring it back and uh, I've not sunk a magnet uh, into track work yet. I have to do that for experimentation, but here's a magnet on the end of something and there we go. Coupling lifts very easily. So, I don't anticipate any problem with coupling and uncoupling. Uh, and of course, um, with this sort of coupling, uh, one has a hooker, a hook, a chopper on one end. Uh, but not on the other. So that's where we are. Uh, the height of it is a bit critical and uh, the centre of the coupling is 10.5 mil which equates to 18 inches. Now I think the Festiniog is something like 17 and a half or something like that. Um, I'm not going to quibble about half a, uh, a scale inch on, on that, uh, but, but that'll do. So uh, there we have a series of uh, chopper couplings uh, all this particular uh, this particular type are flush mounted and that's the important thing for me because um, although you can buy some beautiful beautiful ones from John Clutterbuck uh, many of his uh, require a hole in the buffer beam uh, and of course I often have a motor uh, directly behind um, which uh, makes it a little bit awkward so um, uh, I'm happy to compromise with the draft box being a bit wider I'm going for <coughs> beg your pardon uh, an entirely flush mount uh, which I can retrofit to, to stock very very easily now, um, these, as I've already shown you, are swinging couplings um, uh, and they're sprung. The reason they're sprung, of course, is to allow um, uh, good performance on curves, which are all too often um, tighter than on the prototype but of course when you're coupling up they've got to line up which means they've got to automatically straighten up on the on the straight section which is where you want to couple up so springing 
is kind of a, a prerequisite. Now, how do we do springing? Uh, taking up very, very little room. Um, for those who know that I've been playing around with the um, Gasworks Picket, this little thing, and I've got this very, very nice detail at the 3D printer on it. Um, the quality of printing is excellent, so very, very happy with it. Um, I've done details like the lamp iron, for instance. Now, a normal resin, conventional resin, you wouldn't risk doing that because that would snap off so easily. Similarly, uh, the whistle and the whistle valve, uh, that would be so very, very vulnerable, um, you'd just ping it off in five minutes flat. But the resin I'm using is uh, Iono engineering-like resin. Now this is really a surprisingly flexible resin, which is great for, for detail like this because it means it's pretty well bomb-proof. Uh, I say that uh, advisedly, it's not at all bomb-proof. Of course you can, you can break it and wreck it, uh, but um, it'll bend very well. This, this is uh, the stuff. Oh, I can bend it a good way before uh, it breaks. And, and this is uh, this isn't a good example. I get get it stuck in my fingers. Um, but uh, there's a lot of give in it before there's a risk of bending. So uh, the flexibility I thought might be uh, of use when it comes to solving this little problem. So. Uh, that's what we've done uh, with solving this springing problem. And I'm using the flexibility. Let's see if you can see this. Right, you can see the back end of this. I'll zoom in as much as I can. And I've printed two little opposed arms on that and if I get something small as I say a normal resin or a standard resin that would just snap off however that will behave at least to an extent like a spring. Um, now, I've done an awful lot of testing with thicknesses and lengths and, and, and angles to get it to perform as I want. Uh, too thick and, and it's too stiff. Um, and <coughs> uh, I mean, if you don't get it right, it doesn't work. It's as simple as that. Um, and I do appear to fundamentally have this right um, and in this context it gives the sort of amount of spring that I want which is great. The long-term question is how long will it uh, keep giving the right amount of spring? Um, and uh, d you know, does it does it degrade um, in three weeks' time? Will it stop working? In three months' time, will it stop working? Or or a, a couple of years, will it be all right? We don't know. We don't know. Um, but you know, it it's it's worth it's worth a play um, because. Uh, messing about with coil springs or something like that in a space this small is difficult. Um, all one can say 
is I've got it to work for now. Um, and, you know, that is those arms acting against the back of the draft box, uh, pinging it back to, to centre. I dare say it won't stand any abuse, um, but uh, but it shouldn't shouldn't need to. So that's uh, what I've done, um, and we'll 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 see. It's uh, I think it's a worthy experiment, uh, if if nothing else. Uh, what is nice is I can produce any form of coupling I want within reason um, which is extremely useful uh, I can also of course produce spares if, if things go wrong um, and uh, you know it looks it looks reasonably it looks reasonably plausible as a uh, as a coupling and and it operates all right but of course with the with the best one in the world uh we've not um used it on a on a layout uh because i haven't got one up and running and used it in anger um this loco i've also fitted out with Couplings. Oh, and there we are, fortuitously picking that up and picking one up the other end as well. So, So there we are, um, working self-centering couplings uh, flush mount. Um, as I say, John John Clutterbuck's uh, couplings are the bee's knees. They're absolutely lovely, um, but they won't do me in um, in all scenarios because I've got motors, gear motors, doing some odd things. Um, and uh, because of my work situation, I also have to watch the pennies. I have plenty of resin at the moment, uh, but, but not a lot else. Um, and also, very importantly, it's a, it's a, it's a good learning, learning experience for me. Um, but I hope, I hope people find it, uh, find it useful. Um, I'm all for uh, developing uh developing the techniques we all have <laughs>